what you think with um, but you'll give me grants to work with. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> hey, shoe boxes. Have you heard about this? The shoe boxes that we did? We had a big pile of them. 45 or something boxes that we had that we sent out. About the, all of the ones that Jennifer's been able to check, you know where they went? Did you heard? Madagascar. Madagascar. Hey. You want to hear a little bit about Madagascar? Yes. It is an island country off the southeastern coast of Africa, the world's fourth largest island. It's the second largest island country and is the 44th largest country in the world. There's almost 30 million people in Madagascar. Uh, it's a tropical maritime climate, which is to say, <laughs> Hot and humid, so where Jennifer would like to be. 69% uh, of the population lives on less than $1 per day. 69%. Uh, it is among the lowest per capita GDP in the whole world. Per capita, so per person, earnings per person on the whole planet, it's like maybe the fourth. Like there's three or four. Uh, countries that earn less per person per year than Madagascar. Um, among the top five in the world for chronic malnutrition, behind countries like the Central African Republic, Somalia, uh, near Yemen, Congo, Haiti, North Korea, those kind of, this is what we're talking about for the environment of Madagascar. Um, and so, um, the Lord has allowed us to participate in helping out a few kids there. Um, I understand that there has been a desire to know more about the kids. For those of you who have asked about it, you want to know a little bit more about the actual children to whom the boxes have been given. It kind of it doesn't work that way with this particular method of giving, uh, with the she boxes, but it does work that way with compassion. Have you heard of compassion? Compassion International? Yeah. Um, monthly financial support is currently $43. And the money goes toward nutritional support, medical checkups, mentorship, education assistance, and an introduction to God's love. You can exchange letters with a particular individual child that you sponsor, that is your sponsor. So you'll write them a letter. Uh, translation happens. They write a letter in return. Translation happens, and you can get letters back. You can um, tell stories about your life, uh, your family, send pictures, and receive the same back from them. Uh, pray for them, be prayed for. Uh, send an extra birthday or a Christmas gift, and uh, you can even visit. And so it was on one of those visits. And so this worked out pretty well for me, that I met Jennifer. Yay, compassion. <laughs> <laughs> so, not that this is a good way to go shopping. <laughs> But uh, you could choose, a, you could go to the Compassion.com website and you could say, you know what, I'd like to support a boy or a girl that has my birthday that is in El Salvador, kind of a thing. Or just like, you know, Lord, you choose for me, sort of thing. Um, Compassion.com. I recommend it if you want to get engaged. And um, if I do this well, today, we'll tie it into the message. So, I'll start with prayer, and then we'll get into it. Thank you, Lord, so much for your word, for speaking to us, for encouraging us, and for exhorting us, calling us to, to more, to holy living, and uh, for inviting us to participate with you in uh, bringing your message of love to the world. I pray that you would speak through me today, that you would be Holy Spirit power with these words, Show us some steps that we can take to honor you and advance your kingdom in this coming year. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ring a little louder. I could go louder, but I'm just a little, right? That's the goal for today. Just ring a little bit louder. Uh, coming from verse 8, the Lord's message rang out from you. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has become known everywhere. Four ways the gospel rings out. 
works, service, purity, and endurance. It's, I have so much fun developing messages from the Bible. I read it over and over and over and make all these notes. And I have this idea of, here, well, here's what I think it's saying. Oh, look, there's a three-point sermon right there. Oh, it doesn't quite work. Okay, so, ah, uh, I settled on four. I don't know. It just came to me. It's there. Let me see if you see it, too, as we get into it, okay? The gospel comes with words. Holy Spirit empowered words, but words. The gospel is accompanied by Holy Spirit empowered service. The gospel is accompanied by Holy Spirit empowered purity. And the gospel is accompanied by Holy Spirit empowered endurance. Now I really like the idea of alliteration where each word starts with the same letter. But did you notice the other little trend that we found built in here? The ooh sound. Yeah. <laughs> Word, service, is this weird? Purity, endurance. I want this to stick, you know? I want it to be sticky. I want you to think about me in six months and laugh again at this message. Let's look at verse 5. Verse 5. These numbers are so small. <laughs> the gospel, our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. So he's he's saying that it came with more than words, it came with power. Yes, it came with power, but he's saying that it did come with words. It did come with words, not only words. So that means that words were part of it. Have you heard the phrase, this phrase, share the gospel, use words if necessary? That's a, a not an exact quote. I, I like my version better. Than, uh, Francis of Assisi. Maybe I should have just gone with his quote. Uh, but with my apologies to Francis of Assisi, words are important when it comes to the gospel. Allow me to illustrate. Consider this. Mormons are nice. Buddhists are nice. Some atheists are nice. Social gospel folks are nice. But what separates the gospel of this book from the kindness of the Jesus plus people? You know, Jesus and. So we have Jesus and, uh -huh. we're going to also earn our salvation. We're going to do a nice thing, a good thing, and add it on to Jesus so that, it, so that it's enough. What separates? It's the truth of the claim that we are separated from Christ by our rebellion, right? But that God in his love has sent Jesus to live and be crucified and resurrected for us. This is not something that you can infer. The, the lady on the side of the road, the, the man, who gets your assistance to change the tire, do they just, oh, I know why you did that. It's because of Jesus Christ. No. We need to use words, okay? Uh, but, but I'm shy. I don't, I don't want to offend my neighbor. You know, I'm, having, I'm building a relationship with them. And if we barbecue together enough, they will become just lots and lots of chicken or beef, <laughs> pork, it depends on where you're from, and they will get saved. Uh, 2024, ring a little louder, just a little louder. If you've never said anything, find a way to bring it up in conversation. Uh, yeah, so this weekend at church, let people know you go to church. Just a little louder, right? Like if, you, if you're not ringing the bell, I mean, you don't need to crack the Liberty Bell. Yeah. Right? You don't need to, uh, okay, with every head bowed and every eye closed, please raise your hand if you want to come. 
We don't need to share the entire gospel in conversations at the barbecue. But if you only, if you've been silent, then bang your bell. If you only bang the bell, then bong it just a little bit louder. Okay? Just ring that bell a little bit louder. I go to church. My Christian faith means something to me. I've stolen some of this from Tim Keller. What have you been learning about God lately? A testimony that's hard to argue with. Find, see if you can find a way in this coming year to, with your words, ring the bell just a little bit louder. I've mentioned to you before the book Tactics, Greg Kogel, or Kugel. He's got two questions in there that are really great for conversations. Uh, what do you mean by that? This is when somebody's disputing the gospel. What do you mean by that? And then the second one, how did you come to that conclusion? And it's great to put into practice, and it'll help you ring a little bit louder with words. The life-changing power of the gospel came in Thessalonica with deep conviction, full assurance. And this is comprehension, this is uh, a spiritual confidence, and it will come in blame with hearing and understanding and accepting uh, personal ownership of the words, the truth claims of the gospel. So look to share your faith with words this coming year. The gospel comes with words and with Holy Spirit-empowered service. Words and service. Let's look at verse 9. For they themselves, this is those in the region surrounding, report what kind of reception you gave us. So the believers in the surrounding regions know the kind of reception that the Thessalonians gave Paul and Silas. Do you remember how Luke in Acts was talking about the Bereans? Remember the Bereans? They examined daily what Paul had said. They went back to the scriptures and they investigated. They dug in and they looked. And with eagerness, they received the message and they examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul had said was true. This is kind of like the approach that I personally have, and maybe the U.S. modern American Christians have also. More information, if I could know more, if I could understand more. But Paul, in his letter to the Thessalonians, he's been scared about that. Remember? That persecution will have broken up the church and it's not there anymore. When he hears about the reputation that they have, he's commending them for their regional reputation of actions accompanying belief. Look at verse 3. Your work produced by faith. Your labor prompted by love. Uh, verse 6. You became imitators of us and the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. The Thessalonians opened at Jason's house. They, they turned his house into a church. And so they made it possible with action for the church to grow. Yeah, but I don't have time. I'm so busy. I can't just be continuously in service. Like, what's the... There's things I need to... I have to pay bills. I've got to go to work. i got to watch TV and scroll on my phone. Priorities. <laughs> you don't need to crack the liberty bell. If you've been silent, just one. Could you, one time this year, volunteer at the food bank? If you've never done it, could you go once? If you've gone once, could you go twice? If you don't have a child sponsored through compassion. Could you pick one child to sponsor? Empowered by the Holy Spirit to serve? Donate some dry goods to the bridge? Just ring a little louder. Holy Spirit empowered service. Not because you're earning points with God. Not because you're trying harder, but because you're allowing the Holy Spirit to flow through you. This the Thessalonian church is known to the region around them by some of what they did. This is how the gospel message gets out. Holy Spirit-empowered service. 
Allow the Holy Spirit power to flow through you out to the surrounding world, to our neighborhood, and to the nations. The gospel comes with words, Holy Spirit-empowered service, and Holy Spirit-empowered purity. Words and service and purity. Verse 5, the gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. Verse 9, they tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. The Thessalonian response to the gospel was extremely counter-cultural, radical. Their choice to worship only Yahweh and call on Christ as Lord, as Savior, leading to their spiritual deliverance, they had been living in bondage to sinful patterns, bondage to the patterns of the culture around them. Living for pleasure, worshiping idols, likely demons, and the gospel power of the Holy Spirit set them free. They were able to resist those old patterns, uh, break out of a bondage to, uh, to sin and to be in rebellion. They're free to be pure. Yeah, but we live in such dark times. 2023, 2024, worse. It's so bad. We, I can't escape the violent images, the, the scary, dirty messages of today's culture. I'm surrounded by it. It's on the phone, it's on the news, it's, it's friends. Have we talked about Thessalonica? What it was like there? What their culture was like? Religiously, the Thessalonians worshipped the pantheon. That's the all y'all of the Greek and Roman gods. The Roman emperor they worshipped, and they participated in Egyptian cults. No Egyptian cults. Religion would have been a prominent feature of society, part of normal culture with all people worshiping different gods. To be a good citizen meant paying respect to the patron deities, including participation in the feasts, the sacrifices, celebration, games, and other public events. They worshiped uh, Dionysus, the Greek god of wine and joy. Kabiris, the Thracian god believed to protect sailors and aid fertility. You know what that means when I say that, right? Fertility cult. Worship of Greek deities such as Zeus, Aphrodite, and Demeter? Demeter? I'm not from around there. As loyal citizens of the Roman Empire, the inhabitants of Thessalonica would have worshipped the emperor. Uh, Thessalonica was replete with sexually su suggestive activity and imagery. So, sh okay, we have it on TV and the phones and so on. There's no sex temple that I know of. Correct me? Maybe, I mean... Is there one out there? This is like the way that they rolled. This was their thing. And the Thessalonians, when they heard the message, they, they disengaged from that. Gospel power, the Holy Spirit power, purified them, cleansed them, pulled them out from that culture. New Year, 2024. Ring a little louder in your purity? Could you, is there an evil influence that you can think of in your life that you could purge yourself from this time of year? Pornography out there, anybody? Get help. Ask somebody for help. Uh, a struggle that I had, um, 11 years of victory. After years of struggle. Anybody angry? Flashing to anger? Ask for help. Talk to somebody. Are there influences that you have on your phone that you can be like, you know what? I don't need to follow that page anymore. I'm going to block that person. For purity, for cleanliness, the gospel comes with Holy Spirit power to live in Christ-like obedience to God. You can live in purity. They turn from their idols to God, Holy Spirit empowered. The gospel comes with words, Holy Spirit-empowered service, Holy Spirit-empowered purity, 
and the Holy Spirit and power of endurance. Verse 3, at the end there, your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 6, we welcome the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And verse 10, to wait for his Son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the coming wrath. This is good news. This is good news. This, this life is not all that there is. This is not the ultimate reality. This is not the final reality. The final reality, the ultimate reality, is eternity. Right? Life with God in heaven. And that hope, that fixation strengthens us to endure the challenges that we have in this life today. The church at Thessalonica persevered. Paul was nervous. He wondered if all the work had been in vain. And when Timothy came back with a good report, Paul was ecstatic. He's so excited. Yes! Those Thessalonians, wow! So cool. The Holy Spirit had empowered them with joy in the midst of suffering. The church had been withstanding attacks right from the beginning, like a sapling popping up as the hurricane rolls ashore. And yet that tree grew. Holy Spirit power. Yeah, but if I share the gospel, I could, I could lose my job. I could forfeit that contract, that one client that we're trying to get. Or my friend, maybe they won't talk to me anymore. I could be rejected or embarrassed. Yeah. Uh, I've done it. I, in a room with clients, mentioned that, uh, telling a story that I was reading my Bible. That's how I did it. I was reading my Bible, and, and I felt the room go cold. It went cold. And then it warmed up a little. Is that hard to do, though? I mean, these people are, are getting, and around the world today, they're getting beat. Their houses are being burned. They're losing everything. Acts 17, 5 to 9 has got a story of persecution. Other Jews were jealous. So they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, they formed a mob, and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other believers before the city officials, shouting, These men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here, and Jason has welcomed them into his house. They are all defying Caesar's decrees, saying there is another king, one called Jesus. And when they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. They made Jason and the others post bond and let them go. Uh, it could happen. It could happen. What if I told you that I prayed? Pray for persecution to come here. Think about the strength of the believers in countries where there is persecution. They are so committed to God. Their faith is so strong. And I, for myself, in a life that's real coasty, there's a spiritual flabbiness that is unacceptable to me. And... If in 2023 you were real quiet about your faith and you didn't say anything, just, just ring a little louder. If you've never taken a stand, ask God for the wisdom to recognize those situations and the power to respond to his nudge. To be clear about your faith, the strength to hold your ground when the time comes. 
Our endurance is inspired by the confidence of Christ's return. He came first to forgive our sins and will be coming again to judge the nations. Jesus will rescue us from the wrath of God's eternal condemnation. He'll rescue us from judgment. We're saved. We are eternally saved. Eternally. So no matter what happens to us here on earth, fear not the one who can destroy the body, but rather the one who can throw the soul into hell. With a focus on eternity, we can endure. This is as much to me as to anybody. Okay? <coughs> we have hope in heaven. We can lift our eyes beyond our circumstances to the life to come. And Jesus is our model. He preached the word. He served with healing and with deliverance. He offered purity. And he endured suffering. And that spirit of Christ is in us. To ring a little louder in 2024 with words, with service, with purity, and with endurance. We have that gospel power, that Holy Spirit power, to declare his word for joy and suffering, for turning from the old life to the new, and to wait with hope for Christ's return. And so, you will become a model to all the believers in Whatcom County. The Lord's message will ring out from you. And your faith in God will be known everywhere. Is this an okay goal for 2024? Okay to pray this prayer? Yeah. Ring a little louder. Thank you, Lord, for the example of a church that endured real challenge and persecution and suffering to declare your word, to live a life of service, to be purified from the idolatry of the culture that surrounded them, and to wait with hope, to wait with endurance because of the hope of Christ. Uh, thank you for that example. And thank you, Lord, for uh, enabling us to be those same people. We can be just like the Thessalonians with the power of the Holy Spirit in us. And we pray, God, that you would use us to ring a little louder in this coming year. Uh, that because of our lives and the way we live and the things that we say, there would be growth in the church. There would be an advance of the gospel. There would be people who come to the saving knowledge of Christ. And we pray that you would receive for that all of the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This time we'll have an
praise you, Lord. We're filled with joy, joy that comes from only you. Thank you.
and shake them. It's good. So remember, a little louder, right? <laughs> bring it, maybe we should ring that one more time. Oh, I, I got it. You got it. I got it. All right. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your word. May we learn from the Thessalonians. May we learn from Paul. May we learn from your holy word that we are to go and share the gospel. So may we do it unashamedly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming and happy new year.